we are going to be tackling blushes. I did not realize how out of control my blush collection had gotten um, until I pulled everything together inside of this tub. It is out of control full. So we are going to go through all of these. I don't necessarily have a goal for this. Having never done a declutter, I don't know as if I'm going for half. I also wanted to comment on how I'm going to approach this declutter video um, in particular, just because I'm dealing with such a massive quantity of blushes. I am gonna go through these first probably by brand so that I can see what I have in each particular brand. I am then gonna go through kind of a second wave and make sure that I'm not keeping colors that are like perfect duplicates for each other. I say that at the beginning of this video because you need to understand this might be the longest declutter video of life. I like declutter videos where they not only show you the product, but they give you swatches. So I do want to give you swatches. So I hope you guys enjoy this declutter video. I'm going to start to get these organized here off to the side and then lay them out in front of you so we can kind of go through brand by brand. few camera adjustments to deal with autofocus which wasn't working great and then also to adjust ISO I noticed the first time I held up a palette it was very washed out I think these are more true to live color so let's go ahead and get started we're gonna dive in first with elf so I've got a kind of a collection of elf products here in the front the first of which is this elf blush palette this is the light version of the elf blush palette they do have a deep version as well um, I have the light obviously from my pale skin. I do like this palette quite a bit. It's got a great uh, pink, a very nice sort of warm terracotta nude color, a very nice rose, and then more of a um, sort of peachy, warm hibiscus color down here. The only challenge I have with this color in particular is it does have some fairly large glitter pieces in there um, and they do transfer onto the skin a little bit. Now, I love this. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm gonna give you a few quick swatches here. You can definitely blend these out and make them sheer on your skin. I think the colors last a really long time. So definitely hanging on to this. One that I know I'm going to keep is the shade Mellow Mauve. I picked this up as a recommendation from Jessica Braun. Uh, if you don't follow her channel, you should. As you can see, I have made a huge divot in this shade. It is a gorgeous sort of rosy mauve natural just really pretty shade. You can definitely build it up. I think it is great for fair skin, but it is a satin blush, which I really, really love. I think satin blushes are really pretty on the skin. Definitely one of my favorites, so this is going nowhere. One that I do think I'm going to part ways is this. This is an e.l.f. Matte Blush Duo. This is in the shade Soft and Subtle, and it came with two shades here. The formula on these is really good and I actually did like this sort of neutral shade here but this light peach shade just did nothing for my skin um, and I just can't see myself keeping this palette just for this single shade here. Okay, so let's talk about these other two here. I have the shade Candid Coral and this one is newer to my collection and then I also have the shade Tickled Pink. So these are these two shades here. Um, I do actually like both of these shades. I don't know as if I'm going to keep both. Let's see. I do like how sheer the pink shade is. So um, the bottom shade here is the pink um, candid, or sorry, the tickled pink, just a light pale pink. And then the shade on top is the Candid Coral. Both of these have just such a nice satin feel to them. I love how affordable they are. I, t I don't know. I think I'm going to keep both of these. Not off to an auspicious start. Okay, so let's talk about these two e.l.f. blushes here. This is part of just their basic um, studio line. I believe these are like $2 a piece. Um, this rosier shade here is Shy. These are very soft. They have a quite a big sheen to them. So if you like a glowy blush, this is definitely for you. It's not a bad formula. So that is Shy and this is Glow. 
So glow here is on the left and the shy here is on the right. I do like these. I think these would be great beginner blushes. Um, however, I just don't know if I see myself reaching for these two shades over everything else that's in my collection. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass these two along. Okay, last e.l.f. blush. This is one of their baked blushes. This is in the shade Peachy Cheeky. And this is one of those blushes uh, along with all of their baked products where you kind of want to um, almost like rub the surface off a little bit. Their highlighters are the same way or you don't get really good pigmentation. Um, this is another one of those blushes that is very, very glowy. In fact, it probably could be a highlighter on some people. Um, I just don't see myself wearing a, this, a shade that is this gold of a peach. So I do think I'm going to go ahead and pass this one along. These two Palladio blushes, I'm just gonna move them front and center. These are not bad. These are their matte blush formula. This is in the shade Peach Ice. And this is in the shade Bayberry. These are not bad blushes. Um, they actually have a nice texture to them. They blend onto the skin well. I don't have any serious complaints with them, but I just don't love either one of these shades enough. And I have some other matte blushes coming up that I prefer to this formula. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass these two along. All right, let's tackle these two Alme blushes here. These are the Alme Smart Shade blushes. This is in the shade Pink, number 10. And then this is in the shade 30, number Coral. I do think it's kind of interesting because in theory you can concentrate your brush down into particular sections that you want um, if you want a lighter or a darker shade. So I don't, I think the concept is great. The formula is a little st um, stiffer. They're just a little powdery. You definitely can swirl them all together and get a pretty shade, but it's just not necessarily my favorite blush formula. I don't think they last very long, so I think I'm gonna pass both of these along. Just not my favorite. Okay, another blush that I think I'm gonna pass along is this L'Oreal True Match blush. This is the shade N34 Innocent Flush. This is a peachy blush. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. It's just not necessarily my favorite blush formula. So nothing wrong with these, um, but just not my favorite. So I'm gonna pass this one along as well. Two more that I know I'm going to declutter. These are the Maybelline Master Highlights. These have actually been discontinued. I did like these for shimmery blushes. I thought they were very pretty. I liked the little basket weave pattern in them. I thought that was really interesting. The color was really, it was a nice sort of shimmery wash of color on the skin. This one was very natural and that one was very rosy. These were great blush toppers as well, but unfortunately you can't get them anymore. So I don't think it's something that I can recommend on my channel. And I feel like I have enough products that I can recommend, that I like, that are still available, that I'm gonna pass these two along to someone who will love them more. All right, let's tackle these Milani baked blushes. This here is Luminoso. This is the shade they're probably the most famous for, and I understand why it is a stunning peach blush. It's got a nice luminescence to it, but it's not super shiny. It doesn't have a lot of glitter or sparkle in it. This is just a stunning peach blush. The second one that I picked up, I thought was gonna be a dupe for like a NARS orgasm. This is Dolce Pink, and a lot of people say it is a dupe for NARS orgasm, my problem with this shade is that it is a glitter balm, and I don't know how well camera is gonna pick up on the glitter um, on my hand here, but it is a very, very glittery blush, and I just don't love glitter on my face. So that one is gonna get passed along. This one here is Rosa Romantica. This is one of the new shades that they just launched for spring. It is very fair. In fact, it could actually be a highlighter for some people. And it is kind of a uh, rose gold shade. This is definitely more of a blush topper for me. I do really like this shade. It's new to my collection, so I think I'm gonna keep it and play around with it a bit more. So I think I'm going to get rid of that uh, Bella Rose and then keep these two here. Okay, another one I know I am going to get rid of. This is the Neutrogena um, Healthy Skin Blush. This is in the shade Luminous. 
This to me is a total blush topper. It is not necessarily adding a whole lot to your skin. In fact, it adds very little tone to even my skin and I'm super pale. So I just never really found a great purpose for this. So that one is gonna go. One that I know I want to keep, however, is this CoverGirl True Blend Blush. This is in the shade Medium. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, rosy uh, blush with a nice, pig with nice pigmentation and a really, really pretty sort of rose shade that's very flattering on my skin tone. I very much enjoy this blush and we'll be hanging on to this one. All right, let's talk about these two Revlon blushes. These were actually new tries from my collection. I had never bought any Revlon blushes. They came out with a bunch of new shades for spring this year. This is one of them. This is Rosy Rendezvous. Rendezvous? and then Naughty Nude, which is a shade that has been around for a while. These shades were nice. Um, I swatched these initially, and I was like, these are awful. But this is one of those ones where, for some reason, you swatch them on your finger and they look like nothing. And then, in fact, I can hardly get this pink one to show up. And then you put them on their cheek and they're actually really pretty. That being said, I think that I have blushes in my collection that I like more and that I will reach for more. So I am gonna go ahead and pass both of these along. Okay, last up, these are my Essence blushes. I have a Essence, two Essence of the Satin Touch, a Silky Touch, and then a Ombre Blush Up. I continually am impressed with Essence makeup. I really think it is an affordable price point and I think they do some really interesting things. This one is great because you really can pick up either the light shade or the dark shade of pink, depending on what you want. And if you swirl it all together, you kind of get this really pretty medium toned pink. So I really do like this. This is the blush up in pinky flow. You can get this at some Target. So these are also at Ulta. So I am gonna keep this Essence blush here. This is the Silky Touch blush. It is a beautiful pink color, but I feel like I'm going to have a thousand things in my collection that are this color. It is a satin blush, so it is not completely matte. I like how compact it is. I like how affordable it is. I'm, I'm kind of iffy on this, to be totally honest. And this may be one where I make a decision based on the other products in my collection that are this color and make a decision there. So I think I'm just gonna set this one aside for the time being. I am looking forward a little bit to some of my other blushes and I feel like Satin Love is a shade that I'm going to have in mass amounts in other shades. These are beautiful formulas though. So these are the two shades here. The formula on these is just amazing. Um, I just can't say enough great things about them. So on the bottom there, that is the Coral Love shade. And then this is the Satin Love on top. But I think for the time being, I'm going to declutter Satin Love and I'm going to keep Satin Coral. And once again, this is one that I'm going to set aside to see if I have a lot of other things in my collection that turn out to be this satiny color, then I may clutter this as well. So. So let's go ahead and start with this front row here. These are the City Color Be Matte blushes. One shade that I know I want to keep is this. This is the shade Blackberry, and it actually has a really interesting sort of mauve purple split. The formula on these is so nice. So that is Blackberry. If you can see that shade there. I don't have anything else like this in my collection. It is very cool toned, sort of plummy purple color. So I know I want to keep this one. A shade that I think I want to declutter is this one because I think it's going to be very similar to one that's coming up that I want to keep. This is the shade Papaya. Beautiful shade, nothing wrong with it. Um, I just feel like I have other things like it in my collection. The other one I think I'm going to declutter is this pink grapefruit shade. It is a very, very bubblegum pink shade and it's got a lot of blue undertones to it. And I just don't know how often I'm gonna be reaching for that sort of bubblegum pink shade. I do think I wanna keep this shade though. This is Fresh Melon. This is that 
perfect light pink color that really does brighten your cheeks well. All that being said, I'm gonna keep two, keeping fresh melon and blackberry, and I'm going to get rid of pink grapefruit and papaya. Let's move on. These are the uh, Makeup Revolution, the matte blush. I've got two of these. They don't have a ton of shades. You can pick these up at Ulta. They are $5 a piece. This is a very bright corally color and I really enjoy it. I think it is bright. It is very vivid. It's one of those ones that's really going to catch the light. And then this is the shade Nude. And part of the reason that I wanted to keep this one is I felt like it was going to be very similar to this Be Matte blush here in Papaya that I just decluttered. If anything, the Be Matte, um, this one's a little bit lighter, but I feel like I like the pigmentation, I like the formula of these um, Revolution blushes just a little bit more, so I'm not gonna part with either one of these. Okay, three that I do think I'm gonna part ways are these Wet n Wild Ombre blushes. I just found the pigmentation on these to be a little bit lackluster. And then on top of that, the formulation is just a little powdery. So the combination of these two made them very difficult for me to love. Um, it doesn't look horrible. This purple color is just a little too purple for me, to be totally honest. This is the shade in a purple haze. This is the Princess Daiquiri's. This was probably my favorite out of the three of them. And then this is the shade Mai Tai Buy You a Drink, which is a very gold undertoned peach. I just, they're just not my favorite blushes. So these three are gonna get passed along and hopefully somebody else will love them a little more than me. So let's tackle the remaining Wet n Wild products. I don't know as if I'm going to part with any of these. I actually really love these quite a lot. These are their color icon. These were reformulated last year. And I have to be honest, I really do love all of them. Uh, this is a very pretty apricot color. This is apricot in the middle. It's very glowy, very, very pretty. This is probably my favorite one out of the whole bunch. I reach for this all the time. It is Rose Champagne. This is one of those ones where you put it on your cheeks and it just looks so glowy and so pretty. And then this is a really pretty sort of uh, rose peach color. Um, I really like all three of these. I think the pigmentation's good. It lasts all day. Highly recommend these from the Wet n Wild line. You will not be disappointed. This Catrice Illuminating Blush, I never really cared for. So this has got a really pretty sort of basket weave pattern to it. My biggest problem, it was a little powdery. It's not bad. It looks really pretty on my skin. It's one of those pinky gold colors. Um, but there is a decent amount of silver shimmer in there that I felt like picked up on my cheek and I just didn't care for the glitter factor from this. So this one is one I'm going to pass along. This was in the shade Lavian Rose. I don't think I mentioned that. All right, Ulta Velvet Touch Blushes. These were ones that I were, or I read on a couple of different blogs that were kind of a hidden gem at the drugstore or for drugstore products. These I actually picked up during the Ulta spring sale or fall sale, one of the two. They had them on sale for about three bucks a piece. And so I picked up three shades. These first two here are matte. This is Naive and this is Bella. Um, and these are matte. And then this is a shimmer blush called Honey Bunny. I'm just gonna swatch these all real fast for you. This one's just got, it's just too similar to too many things that I already own. So I do think I'm gonna pass along the shimmery blush. And then these two, ironically on the cheek, end up looking very similar. This one's not as pigmented as you would think it to be, and this one is fairly pigmented. So I think I'm gonna keep Naive. I'm gonna pass on these two. I do like this formula though, but I would try and find something that's a little different than this. So I'm gonna keep Naive, and I'm gonna pass along Bella and Wild Honey. Milani Powder Blushes. I love the packaging, I love the colors. I just, I really can't say enough great things about how pretty I think these are. And this is a bit of an issue of me potentially keeping something because I think it is gorgeous. But um, these first two here are matte. This is in Romantic Rose and Tea Rose. Tea Rose is the brighter pink. I do think Romantic Rose may end up being a shade that is super similar to a ton of other things that I already own. Uh, that is my gut. And then Tea Rose, I actually think is a really pretty pink. And I don't, 
like I said, I feel like I have been neglecting some pink blushes and then I put them on my cheek and I really do like how they look. These last two are shimmer blushes. So this is Blossom Time Rose and this is one of those peachy pink blushes with a gold shift in it that is super pretty. This is probably a close dupe for NARS Orgasm. I think it's a little more peach. NARS Orgasm is a bit more um, pink toned, but it's still in that, definitely in that family. This is called Awakening Rose. This is a very nice um, shimmer blush that's in that nude family. And that one actually has pretty decent pigmentation. All these can be built up. They're fairly forgiving on the skin. I think they last a decent time. They're not my most long lasting blushes, but I do think they last a while. For the time being, I'm going to keep all four of these. We may edit these down as we get into the color portion of this declutter, but for the time being, I'm actually going to keep all four of these. So this is the end of my drugstore blushes. Some of these may be iffy as far as if you consider them drugstore or not, but I think this is kind of the last grouping here. The first one I know I want to start with is this one. This is from Kiko Milano. This is a brand that doesn't get a ton of attention in the United States simply because it's harder to get your hands on. You have to order on a website. There are a few stores that are popping up in Vegas and other places. This was a limited edition blush in Preppy Pink and Tan. This was their Coco Blush Shock. They put these out, I think, last summer. I love this. I travel with this all the time. It is this perfect pink and great nude uh, blush. They're buildable. They're one of those ones that doesn't look like much from finger swatches, but on the cheeks are absolutely stunning. It smells, oh, smells like cocoa. I love this blush. I wish I could tell you to go around and get it. If you got it, you are lucky. I wish I'd bought the other two combos that they had, but I did not. This is staying for sure. One that I know I'm going to pass on. This is the Vintage by Jessica Liebskin. It is very, very pretty. The packaging's nice. The problem I have with this is that I just don't know how to wear this. So I feel like this was probably meant more as a highlighter for someone with a medium skin tone. Uh, I tried to use it as a blush. It's just too shiny. I tried to use it as a blush topper. I don't really use blush toppers. The formula of this is gorgeous. I just feel like someone with a medium skin tone would actually prefer this more. So I'm gonna pass that along. Another one that I'm going to pass along is from Sleek Makeup. This was one I ordered online and it is the shade Suede and it is just too, it's too much of an orange nude for me. This just makes my skin look so weird. If you had more of a warm tone to your skin, you might really like this. The blush itself is great. Um, it's just not right for me. All right, two that I know I'm going to keep. These are from Flower Beauty. This is Drew Barrymore's line available at Target. These launched earlier this year. This is a matte blush in Sweet Pea and it's a really pretty sort of dusty pink mauve color. Gorgeous on the skin. And then this is Warm Hibiscus, and this is another one of those peachy gold shifting sort of blushes um, that is great for summertime. I like the formula on both of them. I love the pattern. The packaging is nice and compact. So I'm going to hang on to both of these. This is from a Korean brand called Etude House. You can get this on Amazon. I believe they also carry these on iHerb. Um, these are the shades Grapefruit Jelly and Peach Parfait. You open them up and inside is this adorable white puff with a pink bow on it. And then underneath is a matte uh, blush. These are incredibly silky feeling, but they're very pale. So they're meant for paler complexions. I don't think if you had anything darker than a, uh, maybe a light medium, that these would work for you. I actually think I'm going to keep the lighter shade. That is Peach Parfait. And I'm going to declutter this one here. All right, this is the Soap and Glory Peach Parfait. This is so pretty inside, I had to get it. It reminds me of the Smashbox blushes and bronzers. The problem I have with this is it is just the most metallic color of life. I don't know if you can see that on my finger. It is so ding dong metallic that I just can't make it work as a blush. Even when I blended it out on the cheek, it is just 
screaming metallic. This is almost more of a highlighter for someone with a deep skin tone. So that being said, I'm gonna pass this one along. I just couldn't figure out how to wear it, to be totally honest. Last but not least, these are the Butter Blushes from Physician's Formula. Part of the complaint with these first two shades was that they were um, very light and a lot of people didn't feel like they showed up on their skin at all. This first shade is Plum Rose. I actually think this is a beautiful uh, formula for someone with fair skin and it's a very sort of purpley, dusty rose color. And then this shade here is Natural Glow. This is more of a blush topper but I actually been able to wear it just as a blush when I want a very light glow on my skin. For someone who's not light to fair, I don't think that these would be your favorite. If you are any deeper, these are the two shades that I'd recommend you track down at Walmart. Um, they may go elsewhere. This is Vintage Rouge and this is uh, Rosy Pink. The color pigmentation on those bottom two you can tell is a ton more than the other two. My biggest complaint with this, honestly, is the packaging. Now, some people dislike the smell. It smells like yummy coconut pina colada to me. I really like the scent of these. Um, my biggest complaint with these is just they're in bulky packaging. It's not that the packaging isn't cute. I mean, it is. It's very cute and ombre, and but it's just very big and bulky and they take up a ton of space. I'm going to keep all four of these, but I'm trying to decide if I'm going to declutter them and put them into a Z palette, I just don't know yet. But I do love all four of these. I would say that if you are even a, a darker light complexion or medium or deeper, you're gonna need to find these two. Light to fair could probably pull off these two. Fair can probably only wear uh, this shade natural in glow as a blush. That's probably about the only person that could wear that. Okay, so before we move on to more high-end blushes, I wanna talk about the few cream blushes that I have in my collection. I don't have a ton. I don't really wear a lot of cream um, bronzers or highlighters or contours or anything like that. These are the few ones that I have that I actually have tried and have, and have enjoyed. I've thrown away a few others. These first two are from e.l.f. This is part of their Beautifully Bare line. This is Peach Perfection and this is Rose Royalty. I like these quite a lot because they are very much cream to powder. They go on the cheeks, they blend out very subtly. They're great with a stippling brush. You can also use your finger, but they are very much cream to powder. You do not have to worry about these feeling greasy on your cheeks afterwards. And I believe these are $3, $4, something like that. They are available, I believe, at Target's now. I do really like these. I have worn these on days where I just want a very light wash of color. So I do enjoy these. So I am gonna actually hang on to those just because I don't have a ton of cream products that I like. And I won't, don't see myself spending money on more expensive products just because I think they will go bad before I can use them up. So I will hang on to those two. This Sephora Cream, no, Gel Ink. I believe I got in a Sephora play box. This is a gel formula and it is a bright pink. Um, it's not to say that it doesn't blend out well on the cheek. I just found it to be very sheer. And then because it was a gel formula, I felt like it had a pretty high chance of disturbing my makeup underneath. So I know some people really like this formula. To me, this is a pass for me. This is my only ColourPop blush. This is in between the sheets. And when I got it at home, I thought, oh shoot, I've ordered a color that's entirely too dark for me. However, um, this is a really nice formula. It is a matte blush and it blends out beautifully on my cheeks to kind of give, just give a really nice rosy flush. So I'm not parting with this one. It's the only one I have in my collection. I don't know as if I'll be purchasing more of them, just once again, because I don't wear them a lot. However, I am going to enjoy that one. I will reach for this probably as my number one cream blush. Okay, so this is round one of some of my higher end blushes. This is where I think I'm gonna start to have a little bit more difficulty because I like so many of these colors. Well, let's start with two that I think I probably will declutter. These are both from Julep. These are their Pore Minimizing Blush. This is in the shade Rosewood, 
and this is in the shade Clover Pink. Rosewood here I just find has a little too much glitter for my tastes, to be totally honest. It's one of those ones that shifts very gold and has a decent amount of, apologies, mo, mo barking, a uh, decent amount of glitter in it. It's just not my favorite. And the texture on these is just, it's a little odd. It's a little powdery, it's a little stiff. It's not something that goes back on the cheeks poorly. It's just not my favorite blush formula, to be totally honest. So I'm gonna pass both of these along. All right, so these are Laura Geller blushes. This is Tropic Hues. This is one that I just picked up. And this is Pink Buttercream. And then this is also Baby Pink Buttercream. These are part of their baked line. Unlike a lot of baked products that end up feeling very stiff, these are incredibly creamy. Pink Buttercream is probably my favorite shade out of the two of them, but Tropic Hues is that really pretty peachy color that's great in this peachy gold color that's great in the summertime. Well, I know I wanna keep these two, but at the risk of being ridiculous, I'm also gonna keep this little baby guy because this packaging is pretty bulky. It's just the nature of some of these domed baked products. Um, so I am gonna keep this baby one because it is one of my favorite blushes and I will absolutely take this when I travel. So unfortunately, all three of these are staying. All right, this little baby Mally came in a kit that I just picked up at the most recent Ulta sale. It came with a highlighter as well. I really haven't had a chance to play around with this much, so I won't be getting rid of this yet. This is in pretty pink. It seems very soft, um, and it's a very cool toned pink. I'd be curious to see if I can get this on with the light hand because it also seems very pigmented, but I'm gonna keep this one for the time being. All right, now on to Becca blushes. These are all their mineral blushes. This is the shade Wild Honey. This is the shade Gypsy. And this one is Flower Child. I like these brushes. They're definitely on the shimmery side. Um, however, I do think I'm going to declutter the shade Wild Honey. It's just a very warm sort of orangey brown undertone that I don't find to be very flattering on my skin tone. I think if you are more warm toned, this would be a perfect neutral blush for you. And I have a few friends who I think this would absolutely be beautiful on. So I'm gonna pass this along. The shade Gypsy is probably one of the more unique blushes in my collection. This is one that I, I don't know if it's disconnect, disconnected, discontinued or not. It is a lavender blush with a gold shift to it. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, this is stunning. I love this blush and I will not be parting with it. And then Flower Child is definitely one of their more popular shades. Once again, this is that uh, peachy pink with a slight gold shift to it. Not as extreme as some of the other ones that I have. And it's really pretty. This is in kind of a sample slash travel size. So you can see it's significantly smaller. And I do like this one for travel. So I'm gonna hang on to both of these. All right, here are two NARS blushes. I don't have a ton of these. I actually had a few, but I actually decluttered them um, maybe about a year or so ago because they were just getting very old. NARS Orgasm was one of those. This is one that I just picked up as part of the Pop Goes the Easel collection. This is the shade Mixed Conduct. It is a it swatches like absolute garbage, but it is stunning on the cheek. In fact, I can hardly get a swatch to show up, but it is a beautiful sort of satin, rosy pink shade I love. This is the shade Goulet. This is a, um, a shade that is exclusive to VIB Rouge members at Sephora. I believe this is part of the gift. It is a beautiful color, but I feel like I have other things like it. It's sort of a darker rose shade with a gold shift. Not my favorite color on my skin tone, so I'm gonna pass this little baby along and keep the larger size. All right, the Lorac Color Source blushes are probably some of my favorites. Um, I love their highlighters, I love their blushes. Um, I would probably own more of them if I didn't feel like I had a good range of colors here. So this is the shade Tinge. This is a great nude for someone with very fair skin. I just think it is stunning. And these go on so smoothly. They build, they never look chalky. They always um, just sit so prettily on the skin. They are matte. This is the shade Spectra. It's classic sort of 
pinky peachy shades and then this shade is pretty unique this is chroma this is more of a plum shade I love this in the winter I have to use this with a bit of a light hand but when I do I think it's really pretty on the cheek they're very sleek um, there's not a lot of extra packaging to them they've got a nice magnetic closure but it's just such a satisfying click these are great for travel because they are so compact they last all day on my skin they blend like a dream I just I think this is a underrated blush product that I hear some people talk about but just not enough in my opinion so these three are staying this is tough for me so these are all fairly new to my collection which is crazy because they've been out for a long time these are all from the balm this is three from their instain line this is like i said argyle and it is a bright pink that's just really brightening on on your skin and then this is hound's tooth and this is the one that may be more dupable in my collection Hound's teeth there, just for comparison. And then finally, this is Pinstripe. This is the one where you'd swear it wasn't right for me, but it is a really interesting color. You can see it swatches really dark, but when I blend it out and use a light hand, it just gives the most beautiful berry color on the skin. Ah, decisions, decisions. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep Pinstripe and Argyle and I'm going to pass along Houndstooth. It makes me sad. These are so pretty and the packaging is so stinking adorable. But to be honest, I think these are the two that I'll reach for. And I just don't know if I'll be reaching for Houndstooth that much. These two, I just think they're both going to stay. So this is the Beach Balm. This is a stunning nude blush. Sort of desaturated, almost pink slash brown. But it manages to be somewhat cool toned in the process i don't know i just think that this is probably one of my favorite nude blushes that i own this is newer to their collection as well down boy is a beautiful brighter pink color and it's one of those sort of bluish pinks that really does brighten up uh, your cheeks very well so i do think i'm going to hang on to both of these for the time being So last section here, um, let's go ahead and start with one that I would run out and repurchase tomorrow, even though it's blazing expensive. And this is the Marc Jacobs Flesh and Fantasy Blush. I think this is probably one of the most amazing formulas that I own. I travel with this all the ding dong time. You can tell the mirror is filthy. This is one of those blushes that you can really get three tones out of. You can get a darker, you can get a lighter, pardon the dog barking, or you can blend them all together and kind of get a mid-tone there. The darker strip is actually a matte, and then the lighter strip is actually a little bit of a shimmer, so you can also control how much shimmer you do in your blush. I cannot recommend this highly enough. I'm actually contemplating picking up another one of his blushes at the upcoming Sephora VIB Rouge sale. So this is a boxed blush. This is their Perfect Flush Blush. This is really pretty. It has sort of three stripes of color there. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is definitely a shimmer blush. However, I actually feel like this has a pretty decent amount of not shimmer, but of actual glitter in it. And I just don't see myself reaching for this over some of my other sort of shimmery blushes. The packaging is also really bulky, so I never travel with it. it takes up a lot of space in my drawer. So I think this is one I'm gonna pass on. Okay, so these are the Love Flush blushes from Too Faced. The packaging is adorable. One thing that's very easy to get declutter is this guy here in Justify My Love because I actually um, got a full-size version of this at the most recent Sephora sale. So I really don't need to keep the baby size. I like the blush, but unlike the Laura Geller blush where I know I would grab this to travel with, um, I don't think I need this one for travel. So I'm going to pass this one along and I'm going to keep the full-sized. It is a very pretty, like it's again, cool toned peak color. These have good pigmentation. They last a good time on the skin. So I do like these blushes. The other full-size one that I own is Baby Love. And this is one of those nudie 
blushes that doesn't show up like much on your hand but really makes you look naturally flushed on your skin just not too strong so I do like both of these and I'm gonna hang on to both of these this is the shade your love is king and it's just a little dark and a little red on my skin so it's just one of those dark sort of red blushes reddish purple blushes that I don't see myself wearing this is love hangover this is their peachy blush this is one I do think I will hang on to because I think it will be really nice to travel with. I'm gonna get rid of that and keep that. All right, let's talk about this Kat Von D blush. This is their Shade and Light blush. She has since discontinued this blush line. This I actually found at TJ Maxx. In normal circumstances, I don't know as if I would keep this because it is discontinued. However, I found this with my friend and so I have very fond memories of getting all excited and finding this at TJ Maxx. I do like the fact that you can blend them together. So I'm gonna hang on to this one almost more for sentimental reasons than anything else. Okay, two blushes that I know I'm keeping. These are the Hourglass blushes in Mood Exposure and Incandescent Electra. I adore these blushes. I think the packaging's beautiful. I think the colors themselves are stunning. I love mood exposure as one of those sort of nudie plum shades. It is stunning on my cheeks. And then Incandescent Electra I love for springtime and summer. These have definitely a shimmer to them. They are buildable, but I love both of these. They just give a natural sort of satin finish to the skin. And for that reason alone, I travel with them quite a lot. Okay, tart blushes. These are probably my longest lasting blushes that I own. I'm gonna swatch these for you. So this is celebrated and exposed. These are another one of those blushes that for the most part are very stiff feeling and look like nothing on your hand. You'd swear they aren't gonna show up at all, but I swear to you, you put your brush in them and you blush them on your face and it's like perfect pigmentation, perfect blending. They last for a zillion years. I trust these when I have to have long sort of 15 hour workday kinds, but I, all that to say, I love all three of these shades and I will be keeping all three of them. Okay, these are two Makeup Geek blushes. This is in the shade Soulmate and this is in the shade Blind Date. The formula on these is phenomenal. Um, however, I think that this darker shade, I have other sort of plummy colors like it and I think I'd just rather keep hang on to Blind Date and I'm gonna pass along Soulmate. This is the only Clinique blush that I own. This is Melon Pop. This is a beautiful blush. This is actually a blush formula that I think is, I don't wanna say underrated, because I do hear people talk about it. It's beautiful sort of flower pattern on the blush itself, which I think is stunning. The pigmentation is amazing. This is a beautiful color, and I don't see myself getting rid of this one. These are two Urban Decay blushes. This is the newest one to my collection. This is a matte blush called Obsessed. And this is the shade Rapture. Obsessed is beautiful. It's just your very pretty sort of classic bluish pink shade. Like I said, I've been trying to expand my pink collection for a little while now. This shade here in Rapture is stunning and it blends out to the most beautiful plum with a little bit of a shimmer to it. It looks great on my skin tone. I just love it. So don't see myself getting rid of either one. So these are more of my dusty pinks. Okay, so I actually think I'm going to get rid of this Milani one. I'm just looking at swatches here on my arm. This one looks very similar to, oh gosh, one of the other ones. And it was a little bit more powdery than I remember it being. So I am actually gonna pass this one along. These I think are different enough slash either in finish or in color that I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to them and I feel pretty good about that selection there. Okay, next up is kind of a category of pink blushes and these are brighter pink. The two that are most similar, honestly, are this Too Faced one and this uh, Urban Decay one. This Too Faced one has some sparkle in it. I'm curious to see if this is going to end up looking like glitter on my skin, but I've not really played around with it because it's so new to my collection. I do think I'm going to pass this Mally one along. 
I just think it's very similar to the other colors on my wrist here, and I think I will reach for these other ones first. I like having a drugstore option, so I want to keep that. I may in the future come back and actually declutter this Love Flesh blush, but for the time being, I'm okay with keeping what I have. Stop. These are my mauve slash purpley blushes. Okay, so I can already tell this Lorac shade is going to be completely different from anything else that I'm about to swatch. This is a very nice matte version of, I think, what is going to be a dupe here for these. Um, so I think this Lorac one is definitely a keep. Let's swatch these two. I think I'm gonna have to decide between them. That shade from the balm is 10 times more pigmented. Um, that's the balm and this is the Urban Decay. So I'm actually gonna hang on to Urban Decay and I'm gonna go ahead and pass along the balm. I think they are the same tone, but I think I will have to work much harder to get a light hand on this one. And the Urban Decay one is going to build gradually and they are virtually the same color. I already know this Gypsy shade is completely unique to my collection, so I'm gonna hang on to that. I'm curious about these two. So this is the B Matte Blush in Blackberry versus the Sweet Pea shade from Flower Beauty. They are similar, but I do feel like this Blackberry shade is a little more purple toned than this one, which is a little more neutral. So for me, I'm gonna call these diff duplicates enough. We're gonna keep both of those. Gosh, those are super stinking similar. Okay, I am actually going to declutter this True Blend one because I'd rather have the Hourglass one in my collection, just being a bit of a snob. And then this e.l.f. blush I know is pretty unique. It is more of a nude blush. It probably should have been put in my nude blush section, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm good with keeping these two. All right, we're gonna bring over peachy shades now. Let's start here. This is that gold, rose pink sort of shade. I think I'm actually going to pass along this Wet n Wild one, and I actually, now that I look at these swatches on my arm, I actually feel like the Flower Beauty one is too intense for my skin tone. It's going to look just gold, so I'm actually going to pass that one along as well. I think I'm going to keep the Milani, and the Laura Geller, and the Becca. I do believe this Incandescent Electra, yeah, see that's much lighter and much more pinky peach. And then I think this one is more straight orangey peach. This is going to be satin. And that may actually be a dupe of this Too Faced one here. Nope, that one's more pink. All right, so those are unique and different. These two here, similar, but one is matte and one is satin. So I'm okay with keeping those two. Clinique, melon pop, a little bit lighter. All right, so I'm okay with keeping that. So we've added two more to the declutter there. Now on to what is probably the largest category, and that is clearly my love affair with nude blushes. All right, so let's look at the matte blushes first. Those are pretty much spot on. So I am actually going to pass on the shade Naive. That is a dupe for exposed. Keeping this, and we're gonna keep this. This is a really nice blush topper. All right, let's look at the rest of these matte blushes here. I already know I'm keeping this just for sentimental, so. These I all feel are pretty unique. Okay, I do think I'm gonna pass this e.l.f. blush along. This is Candid Coral. I think it's just gonna be too orange on my skin. So I'm gonna pass this along. I'm also debating passing on this orange shade, which is very similar. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on this apricot in the middle shade. I think I'm gonna pass on this tickled pink shade from e.l.f. and I'm gonna keep this Essence blush. The two that I'm debating here the most are probably this Love blush. They are different. I think I'm gonna pass this Milani one along and keep this Love Flush one. All right, so that added four more to the declutter and I'm going to keep the rest of these. Okay, so here is uh, what I am decluttering in this box here. 
I'm decluttering 45 total blushes from my collection here. And this is what I am keeping here. I am keeping 50, so I've decluttered 47% of my collection. So I am pretty proud of myself here. Um, these will all be going to great homes. Although this is still a lot, this is a much more manageable number. They are all shades that I really enjoy. And I think for the time being, I'm feeling fairly good about this declutter. If you like declutter videos like these, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I hope that you guys enjoyed my approach. I know this is a very long video. I haven't edited it, but I can already tell it's going to be obnoxiously long, but hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great day and I will see you in my next declutter video. Bye.